Hello, welcome to another exciting lecture by Dr. Armand. Today we'll be talking about uh, resonance and formal charge. Those are the two main uh, topics for today's lecture, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the chemistry. Ah, messed up. Hold on one second. Here we go. So this is part two of today of chapter nine through 11 uh, lecture series. So again, we're going to be learning some of chapter nine, all of chapter 10, and some of chapter 11. So in all, it's about um, two full chapters of material. <clears throat> this is for the last exam of the semester. And so today's topics, as I said, will be formal charge, resonance and formal charge. Resonance deals with the different arrangement of electrons in a molecular ion, and formal charge is the charge uh, that would be felt by the atom if electrons were shared equally. Before we begin that, we're going to actually look at a few practice problems involving what we learned last lecture, which is drawing Lewis structures in it and exceptions to the octet. So now we want to draw the structure. We have this question. It says, how many lone pairs of electrons are on the nitrogen and NO2 minus? So what we're going to need to do in order to solve this problem is to determine the Lewis structure. So the first step, determine the number of valence electrons. So we have one nitrogen, which is five valent electrons plus two oxygens, which have six valence electrons plus one. And again, that plus one comes from the fact that it's a negative one charge. So this is a total of, let's see, 12, 18. And so again, this plus one, <coughs> comes from the negative one charge. So that's where the plus one comes from. So we have 18 valence electrons. The next step is to draw the skeletal structure. So we put nitrogen in the center because it's the first non-hydrogen element and we connect it to the two oxygens. So we used four electrons. How many do we have left? We have left 18 minus four is 14 electrons left. So we only have 14 electrons left that we can use. And so for an octet, each oxygen needs how many more? electrons. That's right, each oxygen needs six more electrons. That's a total of 12. And then nitrogen needs, that's correct, four more electrons. And so our total is 16 electrons. So we need 16 electrons in order for uh, everything to have an octet. And so we have 14, we need 16 worth efficient two electrons. So if we're deficient two electrons, what does that mean? That's correct, it means we need a double bond. So let's put a double bond here in the skeletal structure. And it doesn't matter which side you put the double bond as long as one side gets the double bond. 
So now if we look, we've used six, we have left 18 minus six is 12 electrons. Okay. So each oxygen needs, well, let's see, uh, one oxygen with the double bond needs four more electrons. Oxygen with the single bond need six more electrons for an octet. And then nitrogen needs two more electrons. That's a total of 12 electrons. So we have 12, we need 12, our balance is zero. So we can go ahead and add them in as lone pairs. You just have to make sure they're distinguishable lone pairs. And I made a boo-boo. I'll correct it. I added too many lone pairs to the double bond. Oh no. There we go. Eraser. Oops. Undo. There. So that's the Lewis structure of NO2 minus. Now we've got to do one extra thing. We've got to put it in brackets. and then a negative sign. So how many lone pairs are on the nitrogen ion, a nitrogen atom in the ion NO2 minus? The answer is one lone pair of electrons. So that's the answer. Now, we're on to the second question. We want to select which of the following elements can have more than, could have more than eight valence electrons. And so pay attention here, this is important. So eight valence electrons, we want to know which ones can have more than eight valence electrons. You have to start off with looking at row three or below. So row three is here. So those that can have an expanded octet are going to be the following ones that I highlight in green. Typically it's going to be phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, iodine, so these 10 elements that I've highlighted in green, and make sure you remember these, these 10 elements could have an expanded octet. And the reason they could have an expanded octet is because they're on row three and below. So these, again, can have an expanded octet. Now, on the other flip side, we talked about deficient octets. Now the fission octet's very few. So it's boron aluminum when they're as molecules and beryllium. These were the ones we talked about, the fission octets.
This can have a deficient octet. And when aluminum and boron in molecules has a deficient octet, not when in ions. So now the answer to the question, which of the ones would have a expanded octet? Well, carbon wouldn't because it's row two. Nitrogen wouldn't, it's row two. Boron wouldn't, again, it's row two. Bromine could, it's row four. Oxygen couldn't and hydrogen could. So the answer is bromine. So again, row three and below, those 10 elements could have an expanded octet. And now just one more example of a Lewis structure with an expanded octet. Here we have an ion, selenium trichloride ion. And we want to know how many lone pairs are on the selenium atom in this ion. So again, the first step is to determine the total number of valence electrons. So one selenium has six, three chlorines, each chlorine has seven, and then we need to add an extra one because we have a charge of negative one. And this becomes, what's that? 21, 22, 28. So we have 28 valence electrons to work with. So the first step is to draw the skeletal structure. So we put selenium in the center. It's the first non-hydrogen atom. And we connect it to the three chlorines. All right, so now we want to figure out how many electrons we used. So we used six electrons. We have left 28 minus six is 22 electrons. So we have 22 electrons left. So each chlorine needs how many more for an octet? Each chlorine atom needs six more for octet. Selenium needs two more. So that's a total of six times three, total of 20 electrons. So we have 22 electrons. We need 20 electrons. We have a surplus of two. So don't worry about the two right now. Just go ahead and add the lone pairs of electrons around the each atom for an octet. Set so six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Now, that extra two electrons, you just add to the central atom as a lone pair. So we'll do those in red. So whenever you have anything in surplus, you just fill the octet. Whatever is left, you dump it on the central atom as lone pairs of electrons. And so one last thing, we got to put it in brackets. And then the charge. Okay. So the lone pairs on the selenium, the answer would be two lone pairs.
So that would be the answer to the question. Again, this is just a refresher how to draw Lewis structures of expanded octets. So hopefully it was informative. So now moving on to today's lecture. One thing we'll be talking about is resonance. And so for resonance, this means you have the same atom arrangement. You don't change its chemical physical properties. You're just changing the arrangement of the electrons. So last week or last time we talked about SO2. SO2 has a double bond. It doesn't matter which side you put the double bond. It could be here or it could be here. The fact is it flips back and forth between the two positions. So in, in actuality, it's what we call delocalized. So that double bond is delocalized over the two oxygens. It flips back and forth. And the way we describe resonance is we use a dashed line. So this dashed line signifies that the double bond alternates between the two oxygens. So that's what we mean by resonance. So to have resonance, you have to have multiple positions where a multiple bond can occur. So for example, here we have NO3. So again, NO3, we have this one single, this one double bond, and it can alternate over all three oxygen positions. So this Double bond flips back and forth between all three positions. And so in, what we get is an average that looks like this. So that dashed line signifies where the double bond flips to. Now one other type of one that has resonance, and maybe I can show it on the next page, but we have what's called the acetate ion and so the acetate ion looks something like this So acetate ion has resonance because that double bond can flip back and forth. Just wanted to show you that even the acetate ion has resonance. So that double bond flows back and forth between the two oxygen positions. So ozone is an example of something that has resonance because again, the double bond flips back and forth between the two positions. So it has redness. So it would look like
this would be the resonance form of ozone. Again, the dash bonds represent that the double bond alternates between the two positions. We'll come back to that. So now we're going to talk about the second topic, which is formal charge. And so formal charge is the charge an atom would have if the bonding electrons were shared equally. And as we'll learn later on in chapter 10, we'll see that the, in some cases, the bonding electrons are not shared equally. And so formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons for that atom minus the number of unshared electrons plus one half the shared valence electrons. And sometimes for the one half shared valence electrons, it's the same as saying the number of bonds. So the number of bonds is the same thing as saying one half the shared valence electrons. So there are three important rules for formal charge. And these rules supersede octet rule. So these rules are preferred over the octet rule. So remember this. So number one, small formal charges are preferred to larger ones. So if you can draw a structure that has zero formal charge is more preferred than a structure that has negative one formal charge. Excuse me. Secondly, the same non-zero formal charge on adjacent atoms is not preferred. So if you have two atoms next to each other, they won't, won't, won't want to have the same formal charge. So if one is negative one, the other one shouldn't be negative one. Now the last bullet, the more negative formal charge should reside on the more electronegative atom. And we haven't talked about electronegativity yet, but the more electronegative atom means the closer it is to fluorine because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So the closer you are to fluorine, the more negative you are. So for example, oxygen is more negative than carbon. Or chlorine's more negative, for example, than sulfur. These are just some examples. We'll talk more about electronegativity a little bit later on. But what you have to remember, which is very important, the rules for formal charge supersede that of octet rule. So if you can draw a structure that obeys formal charge rules, it's more preferred than ones that obey the octet rule. And we'll look at some examples of this in just a moment. So one I want to look at is ozone. And as you see here, ozone has a double bond oxygen on the left, an oxygen with a double bond and a single bond on the right, and one with a single bond, or double bond, single bond in the center, and one on the single bond on the right. And so the way, let's say we want to calculate the formal charge of this double bond oxygen. So the oxygen with the double bond. So how many valence electrons does oxygen have? It has six. Minus the number of unshared electrons, which is, that's right, four, plus the number of bonds, which is, that's right, two. So that's where the double bond oxygen has a formal charge of zero. So anytime you see a double bond oxygen, right here, a double bond oxygen 
always has a formal charge of zero. It never changes. So anytime you see a double bond oxygen, you know it's going to have a, a formal charge of zero. Now if we go to the, the central oxygen atom, so here we want to calculate the formal charge of the oxygen atom that has a double bond and a single bond. So here again, oxygen has six valence electrons. How many lone electrons he ha they have is two. How many bonds? Three. So this oxygen has a plus one charge. So anytime you see an oxygen with a double bond and a single bond attached to it, it's going to have a plus one charge. It never changes. So this here, this oxygen in the center, anytime you see something with a double bond and a single bond with oxygen, it's going to have plus one. Undo, undo. And then lastly, we want to calculate the single bond oxygen. So the oxygen with just a single bond. So again, we have six valence electrons minus the number of lone electrons, which is six, plus the number of bonds, which is one. And so we get negative one. So anytime you see a single bond oxygen atom, so an oxygen atom with one single bond, it's always going to be a negative one charge. Anytime you see an oxygen atom with just one single bond, it's going to have a negative one charge. That is probably the most used formal charge you need to remember. Anytime you see a single bond oxygen atom, an, an oxygen atom with one single bond, it's going to have a negative one formal charge. Let me repeat that. Anytime you have an oxygen atom with one single bond, it's going to have a formal charge of negative one. That's the, probably the most important formal charge rule to remember. Secondly, anytime you see an oxygen atom with just only one double bond, nothing else, it's going to have a zero charge. So again, anytime you see an oxygen atom with only one double bond, it's going to have a zero charge. Those two things will help a lot when drawing Lewis structures. So here we have, we want to know which one of these examples of this anion NCO minus is the correct one based on formal charge. So we'll start with the first one. We'll calculate the formal charge of a triple bond nitrogen. So nitrogen has five valence electrons minus two lone electrons plus three bonds equals zero. Next, we'll do the carbon. So for number one, we'll do the carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons, zero lone electrons, plus four bonds equals zero. Now we'll do the single bond oxygen. And what should, it, what should the single bond oxygen's formal charge be? That's correct, negative one. So when we do oxygen, single bond oxygen, valence electrons is six minus six plus one equals negative one. So we'll go through each one, and then we'll explain why, which one is the preferred structure. So that was the first one. Now we're going to the second one. So we're going to look at the double bond nitrogen. That'd be five minus four plus two equals negative one. So that nitrogen double bond has a negative one charge. 
now we go to the carbon in the center, to this carbon. Be four minus zero lone electrons plus four bonds equals zero. And then we have a double bond oxygen. So a double bond oxygen should have what formal charge? That's correct, a zero. So when we calculate the double bond oxygen, it has six valence electrons minus four lone electrons plus two bonds, zero. So it should have a zero formal charge. Now for the last one. So now we have a nitrogen single bond. Nitrogen has five valence electrons minus the number of lone electrons, which is six plus one equals negative one. So this nitrogen has a negative one charge. Excuse me, negative two, my bad. Oops, yeah, seven, five minus seven is negative two. Made a boo-boo. So now we do the carbon in the center. So carbon has four valence electrons minus zero lone electrons plus four bonds equals zero. And then lastly, we have a triple bond, oxygen. So oxygen has six valence electrons minus two lone electrons plus three bonds equals positive one. So, so now let's look at these. So in number one, we have a lot of zero formal charges. Nitrogen and carbon are zero and oxygen is negative one. In the second one, we have carbon and oxygen are zero and nitrogen is negative one. So the only difference between one and two is that in number one, oxygen has a negative one charge. In number two, nitrogen has a negative one charge. And which one of these is preferred? It's going to be the first one because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. So the negative charge should be on the oxygen atom. So, so this is why number one is the preferred structure because again the, uh, the negative charge is on the oxygen. Now number three doesn't work because again, this negative two is on the nitrogen and a plus one is on the oxygen. And since oxygen is more negative than nitrogen, the um, negative charge should be on the oxygen. Secondly, these formal charges deviate substantially from zero. So this is why number one is the preferred structure because most of the elements have zero formal charges and then the negative charge is on the most electronegative. Hello. So here we want to calculate what's the formal charge of SC on the ion SCl3 minus. We drew its Lewis structure earlier, but before that, I want to draw the Lewis structure of CO2. So down here, let's draw the Lewis structure CO2, carbon dioxide. And then we'll come back to the above question. So CO2, we've got to determine the total number of valence electrons. So it's going to be four plus two times six 
equals 16 electrons. So now let's draw the skeletal structure of carbon dioxide. So we used four. We have left 12 electrons. Each oxygen needs how many? Needs six more for octet. And carbon needs four more for octet. So we need sixteen. We need 16, we have 12. We're deficient for electrons. So thinking back from last lecture, if you're deficient for electrons, what do you need? Think, think, think. What you need is you either need two double bonds or a triple bond and a single bond. So which one do we use? So now let's draw both of those. We'll draw CO2 with double bonds, and then we'll draw CO2 with a triple bond and a single bond. So that's CO2 with a double bond. Now let's draw CO2 with a triple and a single bond. So that's CO2 with a triple bond and a single bond. Both of these obey the octet rule because every element has eight electrons. So now let's look at the formal charges. So for a double bond oxygen, what's its formal charge? Oxygen double bond. Oxygen has six valence electrons minus four lone electrons plus two bonds equals zero. So this is a zero formal charge and this is a zero formal charge. Now let's look at the carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons minus zero lone electrons plus four bonds equals zero. So even this carbon is zero. Now let's look at the second one. So the second one, we have an oxygen triple bond. So it'd be six valence electrons minus, we have two lone electrons plus three bonds equals plus one. So this oxygen here has a plus one. Now we have the carbon. So carbon has four valence electrons minus zero lone electrons plus, oops, minus, Zero lone electrons plus four bonds equals zero. And then we have a single bond oxygen. Six valence electrons minus six lone electrons plus one bond. Negative one. So the preferred structure is the first one because it has formal charges of all zero. So this is the preferred structure based on formal charge rules.
So while both of them obey the octet rule, this is the preferred one because it obeys the formal charge rules. So formal charge rules trump or supersede octet rules. So that's why the carbon dioxide with two double bonds is preferred over the carbon dioxide with a triple and single bond. Now let's go back up top and answer the question that was given to us. So let's redraw selenium trichloride ion. So this is the Lewis structure we drew for selenium trichloride ion that we did at the very beginning. So let's calculate the formal charge of each one of these species and see where the negative charge is. So for selenium, we have six valence electrons minus four lone electrons plus three bonds equals negative one. The chlorides, or the chlorine, each chlorine, it's the same, they're all three of the same chlorines, has seven valence electrons minus six lone electrons plus one bond equals zero. So now adhering to formal charges, you see that the negative charge is on the selenium atom. Now this is not a very stable because selenium is less electronegative than chlorine. So this would be a very unstable ion. But again, you calculate formal charge to see which atom in the species has the negative formal charge. Here we have a compound. We want to know what's the formal charge of bromine in the following species. So again, formal charge of bromine. Bromine has how many valence electrons? Seven. How many lone electrons in this are attached to bromine? That's correct, four and two bonds, which is plus one. So the formal charge on bromine is plus one. Which is okay because yep. that's how you calculate formal charge. Now, next, what we're going to talk about are a few specific rules where certain certain halogens can have multiple bonds when they're the central atom. So, on the next slides, we're going to talk about certain ions that can have multiple bonds and their formal charge structure is preferred over the octet structure. So again, very specific requirements. Oh, so we want to know what's the formal charge. Well, one more example, formal charge of xenon. Xenon has how many valence electrons? Eight. Minus how many lone electrons? zero, how many bonds? Five. This would be positive three, formal charge. So this xenon has a plus three. So now, formal charge ex examples. So this is where the formal charge structure supersedes the octet structure. 
And these are a few cases. So we're talking about things that contain, these are going to be your oxo anions. So uh, what we're talking about are chloride, iodine, bromine, also sulfur and phosphorus. Sulfur and phosphorus, oxo anions. For example, SO4 2 minus P, PO3 3 minus. And so these can form double, these can have expanded octets. And so these halogens can have double bonds when they're the central atom. So the charge of the ion charge of the polyatomic ion indicates the number of single bond oxygen atoms it should have. So for example, SO4, 2 minus, when you draw the Lewis structure, it should only have two single bond oxygen atoms. PO3, 3 minus should have three, et cetera. So let me show you sulfate, and then we'll get started with the, um, so we have SO4, 2 minus. Total number of valence electrons. Six plus four times six plus two. So we draw the skeletal structure. S So we use eight electrons. We have left 24 electrons. And so we need, each oxygen needs six more. So that's a total of 24 need. 24 electrons. So we need 24. We have 24. Our balance is zero. So let's go ahead and add them in as lone pairs. So based on the octet rule, this is the Lewis structure of sulfate. But if we were to calculate the formal charge, each oxygen is negative one. That's negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. So four negative ones, that means sulfur is a plus two. So this is not very stable. We have a lot of different um, formal charges. If there was a way we could draw this to minimize the formal charges, that would be preferred. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, since it's a negative two overall, we're going to take two of those single bonds on the two single bond oxygens and make them double bond oxygen atoms. Let me remove all these charges. So it doesn't matter which ones, I'm just going to take two, 
two from here. Oops. We're going to turn that into a double bond. So watch this. So now we're going to make this, take those two and make it into a double bond. And we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to take those two lone pairs and make them into a double bond. So now if we calculate the formal charge of each element, uh, this is negative 1, this is 0, negative 1, 0, 0. So this is the preferred Lewis structure of sulfate ion. Again, the charge of the ion tells you the number of single bond oxygen atoms there should be. So we should have two. This minimizes formal charges, and sulfate has resonance. The sulfate ion has resonance in it. So make sure you remember that. These are oxoanions containing sulfur, phosphorus, or the halogens, chlorine, iodine, and pro. So now let's look at a halogen. So perchlorate, based on octet rules, you would draw it like this. What would happen is, is that, oh. So if we drew it like this, each oxygen would have a negative one charge. They're all single bond oxygens. And chlorine would have a plus three charge so that your overall charge is negative one. But this is not very preferred. We have lots of different formal charges. There must be a better way we can draw this. And so based on what I said, the charge of the ion tells you the number of single bonds that you have. So we should only have one single bond. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take three of those single bonds and convert them to double bonds. And we get this. So now the negative charge is just on the single bond oxygen. So this is a zero formal charge, this is a zero formal charge, this is zero formal charge, and this is zero formal charge. And so that's the preferred Lewis structure of perchlorate. This should only have one single bond oxygen atom. Then when you draw the acid, for example, perchloric acid, the hydrogen attaches to the single bond oxygen atom. So again, here's a rule, here's an example of where formal charge rules supersede octet rules. And these are with oxoanions containing phosphorus, sulfur, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. The charge of the oxoanion tells you the number of single bond oxygens you should have. So what you do is you take lone pairs from the other oxygen atoms and convert them into double bonds. So perchlorate ion has resonance. Next we'll look at the chlorate ion. Chlorate ion has three single bonds. So let me 
me just fix this up a little bit. So again, this would be a negative, a negative, a negative. Again, they're all ones, negative one, negative one, negative one. This would be a plus two. So again, there should be a better way to draw this. So again, the charge of the polyatomic ion tells you the number of single bond oxygen atoms you should have. We should have one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two of these and convert them into double bonds. And we get this. Oops. And so again, this is now zero, zero, zero formal charge. And the negative charge is just on this. And then if you were to draw the acid, you would put the hydrogen on the single bond oxygen. And again, chlorate ion, has resonance. Now we have the <clears throat> chloride ion. Again, this is negative one. This is negative one. This is plus one. Again, this obeys the octet rule. So the charge tells you the number of single bond oxygen atoms you need. We need one, so we're going to take the other one and convert it into a double bond. And now you see that this is zero, this is zero, this is negative one, and that is the Lewis structure of chloride. If you draw the acid, hypochlorous acid, or no, excuse me, chlorous acid, the hydrogen attaches to the single bond oxygen. And again, Chloride has resonance. Very important to remember this because the question could be which one of these species has resonance. And if you don't remember that the oxoanions for sulfur, phosphorus, iodine, chlorine, and bromine observe the formal charge structures and have resonance, you may get that question. So that concludes today's lecture over resonance and formal charge. Uh, please make sure when you watch these videos, watch them more than once and take notes. And also I recommend when I draw the structures, when we get to that point in the video, make sure you press pause, try to work it out, and then try to follow along with my video. They continue the video and, can, and, and follow along with the lecture. Also make sure you review these lectures. I'll be posting uh, times when I'll be doing practice problems over these concepts. So it's very important that you read over these concepts that when we do the practice problems, you'll be able to understand what's going on. Again, I strongly recommend you watch these several times, take notes. When you get the problem, stop, work out the problem, then continue the video. If you learned something new or liked the video, make sure you press the like button so at least I know I'm on the right track. Uh, until next time, Dr. Armand signing off.